Coming up, the Brooklyn Nets win a thriller at home over the Pacers. Noah Clowney takes the net steps in his rookie career, but also Brooklyn officially eliminated from the playoff picture. Oh, it's the full range of emotions all coming up next. You are locked on Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, uh, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the winning Brooklyn Nets, so to speak, every single day. He's Doug Norrie. I'm Adam Marmick. We thank you, boys, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And tell you, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, co- new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And Doug... You can hear it, man. I'm a little flustered. I'm fumbling over my words. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. That's the mix of emotions we come into following the Nets win over the Pacers. Yeah, the NBA giveth and the NBA taketh away. It's like we if we're just gonna, you know, throw a bunch of lines in here that could describe <laughs> the the way the night went for the Nets. Uh it's a you know bittersweet, like you said, and it, it's one of those games where you win. Nice to get the win. Some really exciting things to come out of it. And then you look across sort of the, the standings aisle and you see that the Hawks have also won. And, you know, essentially a foregone conclusion that the Nets were eliminated from the playoffs. But now, you know, we kind of had prepared ourselves mentally and emotionally that it was going to happen tonight. It actually officially happens where they are eliminated. So definitely some good things to take out of this game. Um, but as a whole, as the season goes, this ends up being something of the final nail although i will say at least it came like we're doing a a mixed positive negative podcast here Mm -hmm. because i think there are some positives to take this could have easily trended all negative and i think on the macro sense it's clearly is like this is a lost season for sure but it'll it's nice that we have some kind of relatively cool stuff to talk about and stuff that actually projects well into the future i.e noah clowney yeah, of course. Talk about Noah Clowney. Talk about Jalen Wilson being in the closing lineup here, right? Hitting a couple of clutch free throws. And then also that, listen, 29, you know, let's be realistic here. When you're 29 and 47 coming off of this win, you, you certainly by NBA standards go, I don't know if you were deserving of bl- being in that playoff picture. But I also do think it's always better, especially off of some brutal losses. It's better to get knocked out on the hands of somebody else's victory, yeah, right? Sure. Not on your own. And, and and the way that they play these last couple of games, just on Monday against this Pacers team, losing by 22, you do like the fact that, okay, yes, you're eliminated. Yes, the season is what it is, but you'd hate for it to be the death spiral down to this final moment. I think we really would be having a, a slightly different tone to the conversation if this was another 20-point loss and the Brooklyn Nets officially eliminated from the playoff picture. Yeah, for sure. And, like, you know, here's the thing. We've complained at times, or many times, around the Nets' lack of effort, right? Like the last couple games where it looked like they've just folded in on the season. Um, It was the old quit and stay, as I used to say in my old job, where it was like, uh, they've quit, but they're still sticking around. We'll take the checks. Like, you know, (laughs) mentally they've quit, but, you know, they're still hammering those paychecks. The um, That's what it had really felt like. And it is a testament to fandom when your team can win, even when you know that the outcomes ring almost all negative, right? Like, you know, eliminated from the playoffs, but it's a reminder that if the team you root for goes out and plays hard, it can trickle down into the fan base, right? Like there are reasons to get excited. Everyone knows they're eliminated from the playoffs. Everyone knows they've been eliminated from the playoffs for all intents and purposes. And yet when you go out there, you play a little spoiler to a Pacers team that kind of, you know, dips themselves into the play in, you, you, you fight hard, you you play hard all the way through, you come back. Like there's still, there's still sort of like positive things that can happen even when the macro thing is, is, has gone the other direction. And I think that's like something that I hope they can kind of, I don't know, not build off of, but I hope they can sort of remember for these last five games. It's like, yeah, eliminated fans still get up for this stuff. I got yeah. a lot of people on YouTube, right? Like listening right now, like listening along. People are still commenting online. Like the fans are still going to fan. And I think that's good to remember as we get to the end of it, even if the Nets are eliminated here. No, and that's why, listen, if you're watching on YouTube, you see we always have our bullet points up. The last one is, but we're mentioning it here, that like this is all that you need. All that yeah. you need is a team to show you effort every single night. Now, again, 
the the high level view of what this season was and the disappointment of course it's there but fans pay to go to the games i sit down you sit down we all sit down and watch the, these games 82 times a year and if i see the effort i see the energy i see the hustle i see that look of hey listen we just got beat up by this team on monday and by getting this win as you mentioned we make their playoff standing a little bit shakier. They fall into the play-in tournament now. And guess what? As we sit back on our vacation when our season wraps up, maybe we'll get to look and say, that's right, we made it a little bit harder for them. So uh, these are all of the cliche narratives, but they matter. They 100% matter, and especially when you have some other pieces in here. Obviously, like rookie Noah Clowney, we talk about Jalen Wilson. And, and frankly, even just a solid game out of Mikhail Bridges in some regards is also something you yeah. say build on, right? Hey, let's just have everybody play decent basketball. Like, that's what I'd love to see. Everybody playing decent, engaged basketball to close out the back end of this year. Especially when it's at home, right? There's not too many game, home excuse me, home games left this season. They After getting drubbed at home against the Lakers, where it was essentially a Lakers home game, and LeBron's getting standing ovations at the end of the game. Now, I get it. Like, LeBron doesn't come around to the Barclays that, all, that much. He's an all-timer. Um Maybe you want to give a little bit of slack for that, although we saw it with Curry earlier in the season, and there have been times where Barclays has felt a little bit like an away game, the Knicks game. like there's, It's felt a little bit like an away game for the Nets. So coming off those games, coming off the rough one in, in Indiana the other night, and again, like also, I'll just remind you, like falling down really early in this game. Remember, they were down. They've had horrible yeah. for, first quarters these last couple of games. I think they've been outscored something like 108 to 57 in the last three games in the first quarters. Like just Nothing really got being up 11 four in this game, by the way, and then still finding a way to be down big. Right, right. Because, yeah, they jumped out to an early lead and then, you know, Indiana kind of just turned the tables. Uh, uh, completely around them. So they've been so bad in these first quarters too, which is sometimes a sign where it's like, he just never even got out of the locker room. Yeah. And those are the really concerning times where you do start questioning. Uh, I don't, well, I guess it was to say questioning professionalism. We've, we've stopped short of that, but I don't know if they had really gotten swept all the way through here, you'd have some real questions to ask about like, Hey, I know the season was over, but like legit what's going on here. And we were on the edge of that following the pa the Pacers game the 100%. other day. Um, where we were like, Hey, like I, I get it. We're out of this thing, but there's still fans here. <laughs> like there's still right. people that want to see this stuff. So anyway, it, all in all, a testament to just the, the effort does pay some dividends, especially, especially when the expectations have dropped, right? We yes. always talk about this. We always <laughs> talk like, about expectations. Success. I mean, crushed it once a month once a month we we <laughs> go through our the formula that we have here on the podcast which is basically like expectations over or results over expectations you can be successful if the expectations are with less with less success if the expectations are lower and the nets have not to their credit but they've dropped the expectation level so low at this point where a win is like got a smile and so i guess it's just funny it's just it's just it's another reminder about how funny sports are well by the way too it's like they set us up perfectly right lose by 22 on monday to this team and <laughs> right. then just yeah. to set that table and listen at the end of the day folks when you look back over the course of this season yes they were one and two against the pacers but tonight 115 111 that four point margin of victory they clawed back just a minus 39 on the year against those indiana pacers coming up next though it's not just about getting this win. It's not just about showing the effort. It's about the rookies. It's about Noah Clowney and what he showcased tonight. And once again, a reminder is how to maybe know that Sean Marks has a little something when it comes to finding gems in the draft class. Oh, baby. Let's dive into it next. All right, before we get to that, I'll tell you about our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Look, we're in the future now, baby. You got to get into the Fire TV action. Get done with cable. You got to get in the sports, the live games, the highlights, the in-depth analysis. That's what you're getting at Fire TV. Offers amazing viewing experiences, smart TVs. You might have the Fire TV stick, so you can plug it into your existing TV. Give you access to millions, you heard me right, millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Maybe you're talking baseball, obviously NBA here, the basket, the college basketball tournament. You're going to want to have it all on your Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at locked on. That's right over there. Live on locked on or live on fire TV, get the locked on uh, and most of the big pro leagues, college conferences as well. Fire TV channels, let you dive into all of the game analysis highlights and more keeps you up to date across the board. Check out fire TV channels and fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out fire TV channels, you should trust me on this to learn more. Visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. And when you're done with that, 
Go head on over to our friends over at FanDuel. Sports calendar's loaded right now. FanDuel's making it even more exciting. You get in on the action right now. New customers at FanDuel are going to get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. All you got to do before this game, you go over there. You think the Nets are down? Everyone thinks they're down. Nets plus seven and a half over at FanDuel. That's a winning bet right there. It's 200 bucks you would have had. You can use it on to bet the tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL, so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, so as we continue on the post-game podcast, 115-111, home victory for the Brooklyn Nets. A little bit of joy after this, the final buzzer sounded, by the way. Listen, right, wrong, and different. Kevin Ollie turned to the crowd, and he gave the pump it up, baby. Come on. Let's go. Now over their shoulder, a little PR guy leaned his ear and said, we just got to eliminate. He goes, I don't care. Pump <laughs> it up, baby. Who cares? It's his home court. And the Brooklyn Nets will play three more games here before they go on the road for the final two of the season. So three more home games before they shut it down for the year. And if they're going to think about doing something else here, Doug, why not take a look inside the box score and consider, I don't know, just start Noah Clowney for the final five games. Why not? This kid comes out. He gets in there for 17 minutes, seven and nine, three of four from downtown. That's three out of four shots, 75%. I know the math. Five of seven at the line, 10 rebounds, 22 points, a double-double machine here. This is, you and I talked about him in the summer league. Some people would say that we were overly critical about what we initially saw. I would say there was reason to have reservation. His development in the G League has been fantastic. And now we're finally getting a taste of him in the NBA. And this was by far and away, obviously, his most imp- impressive performance in his young career. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's great. I mean, this is the, it's one of those ones where, yeah, I, I, I had, I, I, well, I'll do it here on the podcast. Okay. I was like, you, you have to stop yourself and be like, where was this all year? <laughs> Like, like, could could we have been developed? But whatever. Like, he ends up, this is a breakout game for him for sure. All in, like, just 17 or 18 minutes. Nets PR went absolutely ham with them, too, tonight. Because like they were just looking for all the reasons. I will give you some. Well, they did. They they just let they just uh, let this one out, which was uh, Noah Clowney's youngest player in the NBA this season to record 20-plus points and, tw- and 10-plus rebounds uh, and plus five offensive rebounds in a game third youngest player in NBA history to reach those totals in a game off the bench. So they did a little bit of d- deep querying there to make sure you could just get the, all, all the if statements down to like where he's <laughs> really, the list got pretty short, but in the end one, it's a reminder. A, this guy is not even 20 years old yet. He turns 20 in, in July. Um, we saw the growth and development we all agreed that we thought the summer league looked a little rough, but it was getting progressively better. If you're watching sort of what was happening for him at long Island, getting more comfortable, get shooting from outside, just getting more comfortable with this, the overall speed of the game really was yeah. the, the summer league looked like the game was like just too fast for him. Even early on in his first couple appearances, it was just like, Hey, this is just moving a little fast. This game is really one you can hang your hat on. I mean, he was very confident above the break threes, Rim, rim running at times where actually he probably could even had more points because they yep. just missed them on rolls um, where he probably would have been able to finish the basket. Really nice positioning for uh, different rebounding. It was just across the board. I mean, it's this is not a hot take. Easily his best game as a professional. And we were lower on the draft picks. Some other people were higher. I mean, that I will take the L all the way on this one for sure because I, I you can already see it. It's like if he's this young and kind of can do some of this stuff now, the ceiling is is pretty decent, I think. And yeah, yeah it, really, really encouraging. And no reason, no reason for the caveat. But you know, when we said at the time, it was like, hey, okay, like come talk to us in a year, you know, or maybe another season, right? Maybe two seasons from now, we'll talk about Noah Clowney and where he's at because he's so slight of frame. A lot of the things that I like in this, even just beyond the three point shooting, which obviously is critical for what the Nets have lacked from their, you know, bigger players on their roster. Yeah is also the positioning. Like you said, the offensive awareness. I think he does a really good job making himself available for drop-off passes, right? Seems to understand how to occupy and kind of work the baseline in and around the basket. There's still things to refine, but I I just like the game over game. And and honestly, we talk about this all the time. College players that play big minutes consistently, we said this with uh, when we talked about Cam Thomas early in his career. He goes from playing all the time in college to being kind of, you know, buried on the bench, then sporadic minute runs. As you get more consistency, I think you also see it too. So it's only 17 minutes, but it's not hard to squint and think about, oh, okay, if you gave him 17 to 20 minutes a night consistently, (laughs) maybe going back to a couple of months ago, 
how would we feel about this larger sample size? He has 186 minutes right now on the season total. And I'll tell you right now, if I don't see at least 300 minutes total by the end of the year, I'm going to feel like something went horribly wrong because tonight was an excellent game from him. And it's a game that mattered. I, I like that he played in minutes that mattered, a game that mattered, a close contest, right? We always think about it being relative to, is it a blowout? And you're playing garbage time minutes. No, they they've worked him in and had to be a part of the rotation, not an afterthought to the rotation. That really matters here too for me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, for sure. And I think the minutes are going to be there. I mean, the fact that he played in this game when Long Island was playing like in the G League playoffs and like, yeah, and yeah. by the way, some other teams like uh, Memphis, I think, or one of these other teams had like sent their guys down there to like compete in the G League thing before they before they came back. I, I, right. it, was, it doesn't matter who it was. It was one of the, it was one of these teams. And the fact that like that game kind of mattered and he was up there playing the real minutes. I know it's such a minor thing, but other teams just haven't done it. So I think the, the minutes look pretty secure here going through the rest of the season he's up to 35 percent from three and i think and yeah it's only 20 attempts but just the look of it i know sometimes it's like hey it's going in and it's easier to just you know say it's a good when it goes in and say it's bad when it misses it looks like a very fluid motion yeah the fact that it's not just stand in the corner stuff too that it's like from distance that he looks pretty comfortable on the on the pop and just being able to get out of his hands fast like those are the keys of which the Nets big other guys like Dayron and Clax and these guys have never even shown. I mean, Dayron a little bit, I guess, but have never shown anything close to this. And yeah. when you start thinking about even playing him at the four a little bit, like that's where it gets really exciting because then you're talking about a really pretty aggressive switchable defense with a lot of length if he can play the four. And I think that's like for sure in his range of outcomes. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned a guy like Dayron Sharp, two very different types of players. Obviously, Dayron absolutely oh, yeah. machine, all that stuff. And I know we're not making comps, but just to your point about you know, when Dayron would sporadically take some above the break threes, you say, Oh, that's interesting. But it was usually, you know, defense sagging completely away from him, left in totally empty space. Okay, go ahead and take your chance. When you talk about Noah Clowney, like there's some catch and shoot kind of stuff going on here, right? There, there's defenders there on him. So I think that, that that speaks well to the fact that it's a repeatable process for him. Like you say, eye test looks good. And also the process looks good in terms of natural flow of the offense, designing the plays to get him these looks, not having the looks be a byproduct of what maybe is a disjointed offensive set. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, side action pick and roll where he's actually able to pop as a shooter and, yeah. you know, not even come on the roll. Like those are designed, right? It, it's designed when you're able to do it. We've never seen the Nets other bigs run that kind of, those kinds of actions because they can't. Like they're not fast enough. Um they just can't shoot from those distances. It's just not even in their game. So when you can run like you know, a side screen and then pop out or two man or three man action, like where you're even like running some kind of like horn sets, which they ran once or twice in this one. And you're able to pop out after the initial feed. Like those are exciting. That's like exciting to have in your arsenal. Mm -hmm. And he looks completely comfortable doing it. Yeah. And so again, it's a lot easier to say this stuff when the shots go in, I get it. The sample size is still not big enough. And it's not like he shot 40% from three in Long Island this year. So like probably have to pump it a little bit on the breaks. But when you factor in that he's 19 and he really didn't do this a ton in college either. And that's actually the other thing too, is like he was not one of these like huge stretch bigs in college. And so, and he really didn't make them. So I think yeah. when you factor all those things in, it's, it gets a lot easier to start dreaming on the upside, especially when you just know you have such a runway on his age. That as well. Yeah. Coming up here in a second, little nod to Jalen Wilson. And then listen, the Nets were eliminated from the playoffs. Does Noah Clowney, does finding this little diamond in the late first round remind us of what Sean Marks is capable of and at least give us this caveat of looking to the offseason with some level of intrigue? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll talk about it coming up next. All right. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some of the legal info, claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. 
Investing involves risk, including loss limitations apply to IRA and IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, so as we tie a pretty little bow, not only on the Brooklyn Nets victory, but effectively their season as they were eliminated from the playoffs, we go inside the box score just for one second. I mentioned it before. I'll just say it again one time here. Ten minutes only for Jalen Wilson, just one-on-one from the field, but he's in there for closing time. They foul him. He goes to the line and knocks down two free throws in a critical moment. That's something that, you know, has certainly been difficult for other players across this roster, even on the highest level. And if we want to dip into that starting rotation, the nod to Mikhail Bridges had a very nice clutch corner three there. The nod to Dennis Schroeder, who, you know, we talk about guys that can't really beat players off the dribble. He has enough speed to get that corner, get at the basket, gets a nice little layup going, a nice little layup runner, excuse me, going at the rim late in this game as well. There was a handful of players that made a handful of plays to help the Brooklyn Nets get this victory. So overall good vibes. I know that I've mentioned it a couple of times, Doug. Does anything about, like when we talk about the high level mistakes that Sean Marks has made along the journey, but when you see a guy like Noah Clowney come in and, and show this upside and make you feel like, okay, they have a player in him, does it ever does it ever give you that little pause of, well, that is right. He is a GM that seems to identify talent very well. He may not acquire superstars and manage that operation successfully, but this version of the Brooklyn Nets, he does have a track record of being pretty good at. You mean this version, like when he's able to, what he actually has drafted? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. times when he's had draft picks, like he's well, done a great job. And even though, so that then also does just quickly here, it does recalibrate that notion. Okay. You didn't move on from a kill bridge. You didn't make the big splashy trade with Houston. And even though you don't have your own picks in theory, I, Sean Marks can turn other teams picks that we have control of still into quality, you know, quality assets for this team. Yeah. I, you know, it's so funny. Cause like I, agree with that he's had more hits and misses in the very few times they've drafted they've drafted so much less than and so relative to other teams it's like crazy how few draft picks they've had i mean they've never had a lottery they haven't had a lottery pick in for absolutely forever um and they're not going to have one it would appear for for a long time too it does seem like they've done a good job with it i i still would probably say the sample size is small and like no one here is like a superstar and so sure. that's where i would stop now again the odds in that are super low for where you're drafting. So it's not exactly a knock. I'm just like, not sure. I think that's the only, that's the only place I would put that. It's like, you want to believe that he would do better going higher in the draft. Most GMs would, right? Yeah. Like you would, you get better players, the higher you go in the draft. But so evaluating only on where they have drafted, he's done a very good job, but I, I would stop short of being like, and this translates or scales all the way up to the top, just because I think that would just be, it'd be kind of making it up a little bit, yeah. right? <laughs> because there's like, yeah. there's no way to know. That being said, have they drafted a seemingly over slot? Pretty much. There are misses in here. Like Dariq Whitehead, we'll see. You know, that could just be an injury risk guy that didn't pan out. And it's time will tell. I don't know. Um, or maybe he's but I, guess, I think the sample is just know, too small. Doug, we just don't know. <laughs> we just don't know. Uh, but yeah, no, look, the, 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 he's done a good job for where they are. I would try, I, I think I would trust him in a draft only rebuild. I think you would, I think you would, feel okay about that i don't think we're gonna get it but i think you would i think you'd feel okay based on the results yeah and i think to, and really the reason why i say it is because it, it is kind of encapsulated in this game okay you, you you give effort you give energy you beat a pacers team they're trying to get position and even though i think the wins and losses were going to stack up here against sean marks and against the nets overall just from a perception standpoint if you were doing this all the way through the back end of this season I think you could, the narrative that I offered up there, I think you could continue to push that. I think you could hang on to it a little bit stronger or feel a little more confident in it. But instead, it is almost that question. I know you said it kind of under your breath at the top of the show, but I'll say it out loud. It's, well, if Noah Clowney was going to take some lumps along the way, like I said, he's played under 200 minutes at the NBA level. He'll barely yeah. clear 250 probably over the rest of this season. That isn't enough. He should have been here a month ago. He should have been a part of the rotation when you talk about Dorian Finney-Smith starting, when Cam Johnson is out. You're using Jalen Wilson. You want to get him run. He's an older rookie. But if you had had Noah Clowney here, you could have worked him in the rotation. And maybe you see that spark. And not unlike Jalen Wilson, who came in, hit absolutely nuclear from beyond the arc, and then settled back down. That's okay. The sample size is large enough 
that you feel like you know what you have in him going forward. Same thing for Noah Clowney. I think building that confidence would have been nice. Selling that narrative would have been nice. So while I'm trying to give a, a potential pat on the back to Sean Marks, I'm also damning the organization for clinging too long to trying to make the play in that was never going to happen rather than just selling us this, a young, exciting rookie who's only 19 years old and has so much upside ahead of him. Yeah, and sometimes these guys, like, you know, sometimes late in the season, this stuff is circumstance. You get you do get weird stuff at the end. I mean, Malachi Flynn dropped 50 points tonight. Like, you get I've weird stuff at the end of the season. for years. <laughs> right. Like, it's just April. It gets really weird. Teams are like, yeah. some teams are in full tank mode. Some are just, like, tired from a long season because they've been fighting and having to play their guys every game. So You know, sometimes you're just getting the energy of it's sort of like new guy energy, right? Like you get the new guy energy around. I haven't played that much. I'm playing for contracts. Like stuff does get a little or a lot weird around. Like if you could take take a stroll around the NBA and look at some of the starting lineups tonight. I mean, it's like it got it was really weird tonight. That being said, you always want to like not put too much stock into some of this. I think Clowney's a little different because you know, first round draft pick, like the pedigree is kind of there. It's not just this, oh. No, came out of complete nowhere. Like, you know, like Jay Huff was going crazy last year for the Wizards. Yeah. You're like, right. who? You're like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, but it's, but it's not that, it's not that situation. So I think that even factoring in sort of like the weirdness around the time of year, it would have been nice to see him earlier. I kind of get why they weren't doing it. Sometimes, like, you know, you get a few more injuries. It gets later in the year. The games mean a little less. You're more comfortable running some of these younger guys a little bit more. I don't know. It's just been such a weird year. I I, I will say you're probably hearing me stumble a little bit. I'm having a hard, I have just a hard time evaluating this year in general. It yeah. feels like there's been a million mistakes. At the same time, on a macro view of some of it, I can, I can kind of get with it. And you know what was funny too? Because I found myself doing this. Um, the, the discussion around Sean Marks was happening, and you and I have had an honest discussion about him and why we, we had an episode a couple of weeks ago of listen, it's probably really hard to want to have Sean Marks in a position of of controlling this team and going into the offseason and making the big decisions, right? But when someone else introduced the narrative, I found myself saying, Yeah, you're a hundred percent right to 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 assert that. Now, also. I can reflect on this moment, that moment, this pick, that decision, and say that there are these silver linings, right? So it, it, is, an, it is an interesting, to your point, season for the Brooklyn Nets because of, again, let's go, let's go right back to the top, Doug, results over expectation, or in this yeah. case, results under expectation, right? So we came in with a certain bar, not unreasonably high, but high enough that as it started to trickle down the, the, you know, the, the optimism chain, you started to feel like, well, now someone's really at fault here. And, and that's as much the organization telling us what they wanted to accomplish as it is maybe collectively the Nets fan base buying into something that maybe was never really on the table this year. Yeah, it's just funny. It's so funny that this is the way that the, the tonight worked out too. I, like this is so classic Nets. I, like this is so, it's so classic to have this be the case where it's like, it's like you title classic. the episode, you know, it's basically like Noah Clowney shines, but you know, also no clan shines, Nets win, but you get this other thing where they're eliminated from the playoffs. It's just like, I don't know, you, it's like the Nets script this stuff. Like the, the script writers <laughs> just kind of know exactly how to do it when it comes to punching it up at the very end to make sure that we come in here mostly with smiles, even though the season is effectively over. But that's like, yeah, like we said at the top, this is where sports is about. It's uh, expectations over results. Okay. We got some people hanging out here in YouTube. Um, if you're on the podcast, you got to go over on YouTube because we're going to yeah. stick around here for a little bit of a bonus ep episode. Uh, YouTube, take some questions, throw them in there at Locked on Nets. Make sure you subscribe over to YouTube and subscribe wherever you listen to the podcast too. Obviously, a little bit of a celebration here about the win, even though they're limited. So everyone's looking to get a taste and the ratio of people to cake is too big. That's Milton from Office Space. Oh, one of the all-time great poets. We'll be back again Next tomorrow question. with a special episode because I think we're going to do a, a, a Brooklyn Nets crossover pod. We think we're going to do that. So we'll be back again tomorrow. Talk and in a moment on YouTube, talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, 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 basketball. Yeah. Oh, and the podcast ends. The post-podcast podcast begins with you, the Brooklyn Nets faithful, and maybe, frankly, the, the Locked On Nets faithful. Let's drill down a little bit deeper, the Adam and Doug faithful. Shout it out at Locked On Nets if you got something to say. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I hate to do it to you, Gerard. You're a frequent flyer. It's a great win, but it looks like the Pacers oh, weren't even trying. They were That's trying. They needed this win in a big way. They fell below the uh, Miami Heat in the standings. It was critical, and they were trying their hearts out, and they came up short. It's actually why yeah, they couldn't hit any threes. They, they they went they went ice cold from three, and that yeah. was basically you know make or miss league. They shot twenty six percent from three. Net shot thirty six percent. Is that right? Wait, did I just read that wrong? The thirty eight percent the difference, right? Without um, that, they lose this game. That's all that. Comes yeah, from. and so yeah, they were definitely. I mean, they definitely really wanted this one. Like they don't want to get into the play, and like they're they're trying. They're yeah, right. They're in this. This takes them to the seventh seed right now. Um, and there's a it's a huge difference of not of having to not get in the play, and especially too if like I mean you fall to the eighth seed and you have to go through Boston. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to try. So I don't think effort was a problem here. Yeah, falling that seven seed right now. How does it stand right now? Seven, then Philly, then Chicago, yeah. But like I'm man. saying, like you run the risk. It's like if you get up to six, you're not at risk of facing Boston in the first round. If you're in seventh and you like lose one of those games or like you know, you fall back to the, in the playing game, you lose the yeah. first game and then you win the second. Now you're the AC. Like you want to avoid Boston at all costs. Uh, that's everyone else you can probably deal with, but Boston's just such a juggernaut. Like if you can avoid playing them in the first round, you kind of like have to do everything you can to avoid it. Looks like a little bit of a new customer in the shop. Uh, Lecky, it's like seeing you in here. Just shout out to Clowney for balling out tonight. Yeah, like that's all That's all you can really ask for is for a young rookie to come in and show a little bit more of his game that really gets you excited for what could be happening going forward. I'll ask you this question off of that though. Um, like what do you, how much do you want to see from Noah Clowney over the last five games? Cause I, I know this won't happen and I'm not saying that it's, you just off of this game, you automatically jump him into it, but we've seen Jalen Wilson. He got his first start of his career over, over the run, Noah Clowney inserting him into the starting lineup. Like it's totally fine to do that here it, it, to me, especially with some of the injuries that have gone on. Like why not give him that taste and why not see what it looks like to start a game with him alongside Nicholas Claxton? I think I'm okay with like 20, 20 minutes a game, 22 minutes a game. I, I, I'm not, I don't know. I see what you're saying. And I bet you he actually does end up starting one of these games. Cause yeah, I think they'll probably Sadaku start. Is nice too, right? They're going to start, you know, I think shutting a couple, not shutting him down, but like probably resting a guy here or there. Like Mikhail will probably play all the way through to keep the streak alive. You know, Mikhael's God forbid. Four minutes tonight, so I mean, God yeah. forbid. Right. Um, <laughs> no, congrats. You should, he shouldn't get digged for not, for not playing Um, or for playing, but I, I I'm, I'm fine with this. I do think he'll probably will get a start in here. One of these games is my guess. And um, I don't need to see like 30 plus no, minutes a game no, out of him. Yeah. I think, I think, I think 20 off the bench is fine. And I mostly what I would like to see is I'm less concerned about like starting. I'm more, I would more like to see the him at the five lineups and then him with the Claxton line, like, yeah, you know, yeah. pair it up a little bit like that. Do something like that. And I think I'd be happy. Like just like trying kind of flexing him between the four and the five. I think that's that that's mostly what I would like that. I prefer like that. The out, the outcome I would prefer and no sharp in this game tonight. So you got a little bit more of that. Yeah, that's that that's a little time. weird. Uh, do you think that's well, a little weird? I like it's he's kind of I don't know. He kind of just disappeared like he just doesn't play any basically doesn't play anymore. Well, it, I tell you what is this is an offseason discussion we'll have. It makes it fascinating. You know, the Nicholas Claxton contract, Dayron Sharp. He's obviously productive in certain areas of the game. Now you have Noah Clowney emerging. We thought incrementally it looked like early on that that dayron was going to grow into and define a role for himself this season but it, it really has not come to fruition that way so he be he's going to be another enigma this offseason frankly and i i don't know if if clowny and giving him a sample size and seeing him next to claxton and then to your point at the five as well is it just the numbers game and they go yeah sorry dayron you're going to be the outside looking in here it's it, it that that's as interesting as we compliment certain picks well what is dayron for this franchise you know did you get a steal or just a guy only 30 seconds with, with Claxton tonight. Everything else was with him at the five. So, I, I mean, and, and look, that, 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 you can't argue with the results. Dayron. That's it. Like, it's a one-to-one. -one. You're not sharing the court, Claxton and Dayron. You weren't sharing the court, essentially, Clowney and Claxton either. So that that, that yeah. checked out because that, that's basically the minute share that Dayron normally runs. Yeah, yeah. I, I I guess I still would like to see a little try a little bit, but um, it's not imperative, but it's just at this point, why not? I, I think that would be the only thing. Hey, Chip7, Sean Marks, results speak for themselves. I said it during the episode, another season with no playoff wins. Well, there's those type of results, if that's what you're about. And then there's the other results, you know, drafting well. Not well enough to win playoffs, but again, drafting well. It is, listen, man, it, it's, oh, you know, we didn't, we failed to mention this in the in the episode. It snaps their uh, playoff streak as well. One of the, I think it was one of the longest running in the NBA, 2017-18, right? So they fall out of that little feather in their cap, which is always, an embarrassing thing to have technically when you didn't really win anything in your superstar era. It's so forward. funny because it's like, 
We did it. They just won. They won one series in there, right? I, I, they they beat the they beat the Celtics that 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 one year. That's the only. I'm pretty sure that's the only playoff series win they have, right? So it's yeah, it's just funny. I don't know. Narrowly, so even, narrowly funny, even won games in those in those playoffs. Like even in the first round exits, for the most part, they lost games more than they even you know four one or whatever it was. Lost to Philly. I'm trying to think back to the other, got swept by Boston. Uh, in, you know the following year after they had beat after they beat them, right? That that's the right order of that. Yeah, with with the stars, they got swept out of the playoffs the final year of the superstars by Boston. So there's, there's oh yeah, that was one of our most embarrassing things. I remember doing the crossover with Corrales from Locked On Celtics, uh, and he picked the Celtics in six, and we laughed in his face. Jokes was on him. Yeah, swept. <laughs> yeah, not even close. Time, I felt really good about it. Like I thought, you know, I was like, oh look at us, me and Doug, you know, just ganging up on John. What does he know about it? And I, I, I chose not to go back. I remember like audibly laughing in his face, just being like, this guy's a clown. And then he was, we were like, we, <laughs> I mean, he obviously is. And John's John, like yeah. super smart, but I was like, what is this guy talking about? S six games. And then it was I, over in four. So maybe, it's seven. maybe <laughs> what do I don't we even know? know. It might go an eighth game. All right. Anyway, uh, just scanning through here real quick uh, to see if there's anybody else shouting out. We appreciate it. We stick around for a few extra minutes. Why? Because you guys stick around and keep supporting the show throughout this absolutely downtrodden season. Let's be honest about it. They're, the, the Nets are hoping to push for 30 wins, though. So we still have that to hang on. By the way, 37 and a half. That was the over under win total for this Brooklyn Nets team. They cannot get there. There's no there's no way to do it. So they're going to come. Well, the second we bet the over on that one, we pretty you much. Know. Uh, I mean, I got to stop doing this. I, like, I, I, I've i always IKB. Like, I know better with the Nets, like with these bets. <laughs> and every year it's like so bad. It's like, oh, Simmons lead the league in assists. You know, <laughs> oh, like, no. no don't, don't bring that one up. Oh, you know why, too? There have been. Ver what did I? Oh, can you remember this before we get out of here? You sure you were saying that, and I added in. Remember, do you remember? Like, I added in something else. Oh yeah, you, I know what it was. Yeah, well, I, I know what I did. It was it was Simmons to lead the league in assists, and I bet Kyrie to lead the league in scoring, and K KD to lead the league in scoring. I like put both in because I was like, one of these two guys is leading the league. In scoring. I did, yeah, and I just remember it wasn't we a part. It wasn't parlayed together. It was like two yep. separate bets. It was like it's all going to correlate. I was I was so smart. I was like, you this guys is so <laughs> smart. It's gonna. This is gonna be so well correlated. Simmons is gonna lead the league in assists. Lock that up. That's a win. <laughs> and then it's gonna be, and we're gonna you parlay it. They'll be battling Kyrie or KD. Kyrie or KD. Kyrie or KD. Scoring, and one with Kyrie leading the league in scoring. <laughs> we'll win one of the two because one oh, of them is going to happen. I, I can remember, like, vision, because Doug and I, we, we get together a lot, uh, you know, in, in person. I can remember. I know exactly too. where I was, too, when I said it. I was, like, I was in Mexico at the time. I can I was on a balcony in Mexico. I can remember exactly where I was. I know everything about this. The, 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 two, the, the way that we, we just, oh, we rubbed our hands together and we said, oh, yeah. my God, just think of the things we're oh, going to do. I, I Think don't even want to tell you what I did in underdog fantasy this year with best balls where I was like the ownership percentage. I had, I mean, I had so many best, ball, this is going really far afield here, but That's I had so right. many season long best balls, which I somehow, somehow profited in, even though like my highest ownership percentage were, were like Spencer Dinwiddie. I was like, he's going to go off fantasy wise. Cam Johnson. I was like, I mean, we're going to be talking most improved player here by the end of it. Mm -hmm. I had like 66% Cam Johnson. I mean, what a joke. Like, I was, like, I was, it was just so way, terrible. Within, I'll tell you right now. Within two weeks, I I, I put huge I put mistake. those I put those lineups on on ice. <laughs> I was like, forget it. I actually I think I did. I draft I drafted Cam Johnson in 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 one of the. I was like, here we go. Like little like you know later round pick. Watch this, and yeah, I hung with him for about two weeks, and I was like, okay, here we go. Wa waiver so wire. Funny. Adam, no, I'm gonna go long here, but Adam knows me, and I think Adam would say like I'm a pretty analytical thoughtful person when it comes to like betting and stuff like that right like i put a lot Almost of thought into it yeah too much thought probably and like going very slow i don't have i don't really have a fandom i don't like do hot takes i think about it a lot if i'm going to do anything and i just have such a leak when it comes to the nets like it's so bad and it's because <laughs> like it it's just like such an epic leak that I think everywhere else, I'm just totally fine. And just with this team, I'm, I'm bad. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, as, as you're all very, I know you're interested to hear about this stuff. As I sit in the finals of my fantasy basketball league, it is that same leaky fandom that had me draft Cam Johnson that also, when I dropped him, had me pick up Cam Thomas and just there you go. kind of tuck him in my back pocket and look at him come to fruition down the stretch for me. I mean, sometimes knowing a team is I is like a real benefit. Like when you know it's, it's like you mostly know, a blessing, like old... but it's also occasionally a massive curse, right? Because you always yeah, it's like think the, the, the Buffett idea of like stock, you know, stock investors. Like you learn everything about the company. I, I do think there's times where it is helpful, but I just it's not been helpful for me particular in particular. Um, uh, hey guys, we're gonna get out of here, but I do want you to know 
There's plenty. Well, of actually, real quick, dialogue real quick, real quick. Yeah, we got. I want to put this one up here real fast. Yeah, I'm, I'm the. Yeah. I was the one that said we'll cut it short, and then I'm the one going long. Yeah, I know. Well, that's to be expected. What do you think they're going to do here with the coach? I, I know we're going to just give me your ten. Give me fifteen second off the cuff answer. We're going to do a whole episode about this for sure. But I, I'm curious what what you think. I, they're in such a weird spot with this. <laughs> I, I think that they I think they will conduct a full coaching search. I think that they'll commend Kevin Ollie at the end of the season and that he'll be in the interview process. I find it interesting if they'll keep him on the staff because I don't think anyone's gonna be knocking down his door, but I expect him to go outside higher for this because I, I I think I I think that whatever plan they have, it involves putting an established coach that you feel like you can trust, unlike basically every other guy you've put in that position over the last four seasons. Yeah, it's so funny because uh, the, the the Hornets, Steve Clifford stepped down, did him a huge solid because he was yep. like just a placeholder. And then Peterson, who who comes from the Nets, yep. goes and is now the GM of the Hornets under a new ownership thing. It's just like, I don't know, these situations that are just going to look so much better. The situation is going to look just as bad next year for a potential hire. Like, I just don't know why you would walk. I, this is my biggest concern with them finding someone good. Is that like, yeah, why would it. some... If you're a sought after assistant, right? Even not even like a, a coach, bud, a sought after assistant. Why on earth would you start your coaching career with this team? <laughs> like, just wait another year for another job. Like, like I'm being said serious. Anyway, we'll do a longer episode around that. But yeah. um, you know why too? Sorry, because now you got me thinking. And too, because just like you said about, well, if you fire Jock Vaughn, what does it do for now, Kevin Ollie? Nothing, right? Puts him in a terrible spot. Even totally. if you're a coach and you come in the door and, and the idea is, hey, next season's going to be rough, but 2025 is when we have the vision. But as the head coach, you have no guarantee that if the season goes so bad that you don't survive that first year to get the opportunity. Right? I bet so you they sign him a one-year contract. That's my. That's going to be my guess. They're going to sign Ali to a one-year you contract. Think, I think a one-year deal. That's Who is taking the job? Who, like, with good pedigree is taking this job? You'll, you're going to look – there. It'd be coaching is about self-preservation as much as anything else. You're going to look one look at this roster. You're going to be like, they can't win. I'm going to have a losing record my first year. I mean, maybe you could sell them on something, but anyway, we'll do a long. Hey, we'll, yeah, yeah, no, we'll do a long episode on this. Here. We got plenty to talk about when we go five yeah. days a week once the Nets are eliminated from the playoffs. So, but also right. totally expanded random conversations about our successes and failings inside of fantasy, you know, projections. So don't worry, guys, we got it all covered. Yeah, everyone just does this thing. It's like, oh, we'll get a new coach. It's like you got to think, look at the other way. It's like you're selling your house. Who wants to buy the house? <laughs> like, start the like start. There's only rats about in this that house. One. You want it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Much appreciate everyone here on YouTube. Yeah. Um, Look, that's eliminated for the playoffs. But we still have a good time. We'll be coming at you still five days a week, no matter what, uh, through the rest of the regular season and the playoffs as well. Where we'll be talking that next basketball, and I think we'll have a crossover podcast coming later this week as well. So uh, much appreciate everybody. Uh, do you want to get us out of here? Or is that it? Yeah, no, that's it. I'm good. <laughs> One of the all-time great poets. We're we'll back tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, basketball, basketball. Yeah.